Hi, everyone. Morning. morning. Good morning, Melissa. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Very well, thanks. Morning. Roger's been telling us all about you. <laughs> no! no don't yeah. trust a no thing he says. No, yeah. What? <laughs> okay. That hurts. Okay. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Where were you? He was giving us his first impressions of Dragon Con. How about yours? Oh my gosh. Um, I feel like I haven't really had too much of an opportunity to see it proper yet, but um, in contrast to, because I've only really been to two other ones, I went, we went to MCM in London uh, this past summer, and the other one is San Diego, and I gotta say, not to put any of the other cons on blast, because all the other ones are fantastic in their own way, but I feel like this one is so much more... Um, driven by the fans and by the cosplayers like it feels when you're walking through the costumes are totally on another level um and and the concentration and quality of the costuming is just higher when we were first walking in to do the the walk of fame is that what it's called yes okay well uh, <laughs> when, when we were first walking through it was just Everywhere, I like I was giving myself whiplash because everyone looks so good. Um, and you guys do a parade here too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah they're getting ready right now. Yeah, yeah I was watching the news and they're like they're starting to um, uh, tease it. And I wish we could see it, but I think we're going to be inside the entire time. But yeah, everyone looks so good. It feels like you're walking onto a movie set a little bit. Um, and it's hard to believe that everyone does this stuff at home. Like there were people coming up to the table yesterday, cosplaying uh, characters from the division, and they had. Like this guy had done like a uh, use a three D printer and cast the entire like a piece of gear that's there and he like layered in LED lights. It looked legit. I thought he bought it. Wow. Long answer to say it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome and I feel a little bit nerdy about it because it's great. Like the execution of costumes has been fantastic here. Yeah. If you think they're good now, you should people watch at night. I just found out there's karaoke in our hotel at night. Where? In our hotel, like at the back. Yeah, from nine to one. Where we we're in the bar. No, not that bar. The like back of the lobby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we gotta right. go check that out. There's we so weren't at the bar. I mean, that was not They're dressed up doing karaoke too. It's awesome. What? Awesome. Uh, all right, we gotta check that out. I it's, feel it's like I'm wearing mecca costumes. here, and it's <laughs> yeah. It feels that way. After our five truths and a lie later. Yeah, we'll tell us about it. that. Please tell do. us about I figured out my story. I'm so oh, ready. we can't tell the story now. Though. No, we can't tell the story now, but I finally story. figured out what my story was going to be. Today. I had to edit and figure, like, I can't tell this because I would bust this person or I can't do that. And some things. Yeah, like, or you can't tell. do that because you're lying. Yeah. Or telling the truth. Oh, or telling the truth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you guys good. give away what you no. was going to happen? No. Mm -mm. Okay, so you're not the liars? No. I don't know. We don't know. Well, we might be acting we as liars. <laughs> <laughs> we might be just, you know, leading you astray right now. Yeah. <laughs> Is that really the best panel? Is like that the one you're most looking forward to? I have gone two years, the past two years, and the stories that get told are completely wild. <laughs> oh my god! At one point, there oh, was no. a, a story about like an. Um, a uh, uh, member of the Being Human sci-fi cast taking a photo, like a nude photo of herself to send to her boyfriend, <laughs> and then going to like a like a casting table, like, and yeah. handing a phone over and trying to show her dog and showing something else, mm -hmm. uh, which was that feels truthful. It was. <laughs> it was oh, alarming. No, it was super no. alarming. The girl who did it was just super sweet, but there's just wild stories that happen on that, and oh I'm gosh. always like. Okay. How honest are we gonna be? I'm gonna be pretty honest. Just don't tell her that. Say you don't Maybe. know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so pumped for this. Oh, I'm so excited okay. to see you guys in your stories. <laughs> Serious question. Hi, Crystal. Uh, about Hi, Crystal. Broadway. It's my middle name. <laughs> you just throw it out. The difference in being on Broadway and doing television. On Broadway, you learn one run, one two-hour thing, and you do it day after day after day. TV, you do something different every day. What's that like? Um, well, specifically on Broadway, my last go at it, I was understudying two characters. And, and also, I think on Broadway, you oftentimes, if you are in the ensemble, which I was both times, you are, you're stepping into other people's shoes constantly. And the, I think the difference with even though you're you're portraying the same story every night, it's you have to keep it alive, and the environment is always alive. And so, when people are in the back, like I think it is, it is the 
best training ground I had for acting because I didn't go to school and I loved being in the ensemble because not only could I watch all of my peers who, who have gone to school, but it's like a constant playground for improv and for trying things out and for figuring out, okay, who is this character today? And then the next day being able to shift and focus on something else. And it's a massive exercise in constantly being present and alive and listening. And I think that that has carried over really well into um, television for my experience, like to always stay present and listening to what the person is giving me as opposed to just what I rehearsed on the page by myself. Um, I forget the question. <laughs> <laughs> the differences yeah, in Broadway and TV. So did that help you in the episode where there you were you, you as an alt riser crew where you the blink drive took you into an alternate reality? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I think that um, I think that that my experience in theater definitely laid that foundation for what I understand storytelling to be and how to approach it. Um, I think I've always, I have very much an imposter syndrome because I don't, I didn't go to school for this craft and it is a craft, um, but I've spent 10 years working with people who did and, and being beside them um, and working alongside them and learning from them and, and learning just from trial and error what I've learned. That's your school. Yeah, that has been school. That's your school. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, it's, it's been a really interesting transition, but I think like singing and like any kind of performance, um, it's to me akin to a, a painter and how they like to use different mediums. So sometimes they use acrylic, sometimes they use oils. It's, it's all storytelling. It's just different forms of doing it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anthony was telling me in the, along those lines, we, he, I did an interview with him and he was talking about your, the pilot and how you, being new to all of it, <laughs> asking questions about the tape and like, yeah. what are they doing? And, oh, yeah, I had no idea what was happening. She still does that. Yeah, no, for, no, like, yeah, I, no but, but like specifically when the tape was set in a certain way and I'm, I'm pretty, I pride myself on like consistency and like knowing what was what and, and I, could, I could totally be a continuity person. Um, <laughs> and there were times where they like put the tape down on the ground and then the cameras would shift and everything and we'd come back into the room because they excuse us from set when they uh, set up a next shot. And we'd come back into the room and the tape would be in different places and the first few times I was like adamant, like I did not stand here, it's important that I be over there, like I'm not, and Roger's just like, just can you, can you just move and I'll talk to you later, just like, just look, we're trying to shoot, so if you could just move and go to your tape, that'd be great, I, was, no, I didn't stand No, I told there. you why. No, 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 you, you were like, you were super cool about it, but I was like, I don't know, this is not where I stood and this shot is going to be wrong. <laughs> but, um, yeah, steep, steep learning curve and everyone was so gracious and, and very helpful but very uh, overwhelming at times to be in an environment where you're constantly like, and what the hell does that mean? <laughs> Good, okay, moving on. Yeah. So I have a question for both of you um, about the show itself. Um, I work for a radio station that we do recaps and they're like fan run recaps um, where we have the fans call in and talk about the different things that are going on in the show. And one thing that uh, for both of your characters, for six, the one thing that we really discussed a lot last year, and so I kind of want to get your take on it, was when did you find out in the filming, reading the scripts, et cetera, process, when did you find out that you were the one? The and, very, oh, go ahead, Sarah, yeah, Brian. And, and, and how did that affect how you played the character? You know, he didn't let us know till the final day. And it was literally just before the final scene that was shot. That was the final um, scene of the season. He kept it a secret because he's like, he didn't want it to taint. And, and it's true, you, you know, you think you're professional enough to not let it affect your character. But when you know certain things, you, you, subconsciously you might throw little bits into your character and like, give things away. But by not, we had inklings about who it was and why and things like that. But I mean, it was always tossed around a little bit, but um, it, it will affect it. And I think that's why it came across as such a shock to everyone. Because, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, it's kind of like my character wasn't that guy that anyone thought would ever do something like that. He was, you know, he's a pretty straightforward guy and that sort of thing. And to be that, it, I guess, underhanded in the way he went about executing this. Mm -hmm. But which, let, let's be honest, it's the only way he could have done it because these, you know, he's got an android and 
this person here with nanites <laughs> to their body and <laughs> samurai men and all these things going on. You know what I mean? It's kind of like he's not going to overpower this team, mm. so he's got to use this. And so, you know, and so, in, in, and I don't know if you've seen the DVD extra, but Joe Malazzi on the day literally went, had a little thing where he said, So, here we are about to shoot the final scene, and we're going to start with four. And you, and he has the, the gas mask. And go, and you are not the traitor. And then he went over. And two, well, she's this, and the reason she would do this is this, and blah, blah, blah. So you are not the traitor. And, <laughs> and he went around and finally came over. And here's six. He's the good guy, and he's this, blah, 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 blah. And you are. That's right. Oh, <laughs> you are the weakest thing. Yes. <laughs> and, he did, and he literally went and he had Anthony and mm -hmm. um, I believe Alex going for fittings yeah. to for a GA outfit to kind of throw us all off. And so the and he made sure to told him, don't, you know, don't yeah. tell anyone that you went in for these fittings. So they were both thinking, Oh my god, we are actually the moles. And these guys don't know it. Yeah. Um, and even what we're in from the last day as well, the Anders characters came back and he was so I'm supposed to be, so he was there the whole day, but they literally tried to hide him. Like, people can't see you. Oh, yeah. They can't know you're here. I about that. Because, yeah, because then they all know it has something That's to right. do with you because the last time they saw you was yeah. when we left him. So he literally had to, like, when we were on set, secretly go do makeup and then basically go back to his trailer and stay in their trailer and yeah. couldn't leave it till he came out to film. And so it was, yeah, it was, he was very sneaky, that Joel Malazzi guy. Yeah. Well, the same kind of type of question uh, for you, Melissa. For two, when did you find out that you were more than human? And if you found out early on, before the actual episode where we found out, um, did you play that into your character? Um, so when we were prepping season one, we got the first six episodes, uh, the scripts for the first six episodes. And right away after reading the first six, I, I was just like, something's off with her. <laughs> Something, something's off about her. Something's, I know something's up. And I felt like she was, I, there's actually a really bizarre moment I had because the entire time I'd been training with my stunt double, Anita, and we ended up becoming good friends. But she was talking to me about something and I was so in my head about it. I hadn't talked to anyone about it. And she was, I think she was talking about her mother or something. And I was zoned out and I looked up at her and I was like, Anita, she goes, yeah. I think I'm an android. <laughs> and out of nowhere, she's staring at me, and she's just kind of like, um... <laughs> Here, have another puff. Yeah, she was like, okay. no, she was like, anyway, so that was my Thanksgiving. What? What are you talking about? Um, but I, I took Joe out for dinner, and I was like, I, hey, I think, I think there's something up with my character, and I think it's really important that you guys tell me so I can do something about it and layer that in. And ultimately, they didn't tell me, and I didn't know definitively until that episode aired. Um, or, or rather, when that episode came out, where two discovered it. And I think the logic behind that is um, she's, not, she's not meant to be an affected AI who has human qualities. She is essentially, um, for all intents and purposes, a human. She's flesh and blood. blood. You open her up, she's got all of those components. Um, and, and I'm sure that we're going to continue to delve into her history and, and her backstory, but um, she's, she's a human and she happens to have nanites. Who knows what's going to happen with this like new chunk of nanites that she got and, and how that's going to alter her. But um, I would have liked to have layered things in, but... Yeah, your, but, your your, but your character also didn't know she was that. No, until like, it happened. But and that's, so it, that's it's, about, yeah. which is what is good about not knowing these things. Yeah. It's kind of like I said, you want to think, oh, it's okay, I won't let it affect the character. But in your prep work and things like that, we're developing these characters as we go along. And um, as I said, subconsciously, sometimes you might, if you have knowledge of something, you will probably not, you know, fully let it affect the character, but it will. And it'll probably seep through into a scene that you might do, you might do it, and, you know, the extra little. Or so you know, I mean, just subtle things that yeah. a camera can pick up, you know, on stage, which is also a big difference between stage and the film. Is kind of like you know, if I have a lot of subtleties on stage, someone in the back of the room they don't see it, they don't know what's going on. But with the camera right there, if you just gotta go like this, they've got it and they get the message. And so it's a you know, just the medium lends itself to these nuances that 
are very easily to be they're like easily picked up. Yeah, and I think it was enough for her to because I already had those suspicions that was already in my performance, you know. Exactly. And it's the same thing for two. Well. Like two had those suspicions, and it was like it was enough for me to have that, and and for her and I to kind of discover that together. You know, Nana, I saved your butt in last night's episode. Not kidding. <laughs> you have a lot of <laughs> You're two behind. You're one behind. Uh, I can tell uh, who you guys are talking about. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, oops. Is this time for one more question? So if you want to, um, just one more question, and then if there's anything else you guys want to wrap up with, uh, any new projects or anything you want to talk about. Thank you. Congratulations on season three coming out. Thank you. And just. Generally, I know you can't say a whole lot, but what can you tease about what's coming up at the end of season two? What are you looking forward to? <laughs> is there anything as big as the end of season one, for instance? It's probably bigger. It's uh, bigger. Yeah. I say it's bigger. It's, it's If you thought that was crazy, this season ender is... What? <laughs> it, it's yeah. gonna... It's going to shock some folks. It's going to be very, very interesting. I have no idea how we're going to be coming back <laughs> in so. season three. Okay. Yeah, it's that that's, crazy. Yeah, it's the kind of ender where I can't, I, and I think that the entire <laughs> audience is going to go, what? What the hell just happened? What just happened? And, and why? And how long do I have to wait? Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of, there's going to be some massive strides made for a particular character in the show that will blindside people um, because we've never seen them in that kind of a way. Uh, or in that environment. Yeah, I can say more. I'm not saying I'm, I'm being totally ambiguous about everything. We can't have our last question, Roger, be like, it's going to make you go, huh? Yes, <laughs> Great can. answer for the last you question. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's. It, I think it's going to be. Joe loves his uh, WTF moments, and he fights for them. And I, I know that he had a few really big key ones mm -hmm. when he was looking at the arc of this entire story, and the way that this season ends is. A, is one of those key moments. Yeah. <laughs> well, anything else you guys want to say? I'm being totally ambiguous. I, I don't know. I, 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 anybody, I, I, when I, I, you guys cut these together, it's going to be Roger sitting there like, bitch, move, bitch, move. I say nothing. I know. You don't need to do that. What was your question? No, just is there anything else you guys want to just let us know about anything new you're working on or just social media people can follow you, just any final wrap up things you guys wanted to say before? Are you going to be back on This Life? Oh my gosh, no. The two things I did last year, This Life and Rogue. Rogue moved up to Vancouver. I'm really bummed moved about back it. to Vancouver. Yeah, yeah they moved back to Vancouver. Um, I was really sad about that, to not revisit that person. But um, yeah, this, this summer I did a little thing on Ransom, which was really cool, which is a new show that's coming up. And I did a like movie musical thing. So who knows when that's coming out, but that was a trip, and like, every character that I take on is always a total departure from two. I don't ever want to do anything that's remotely close to who she is, because I, I love her in this environment. Um, yeah, so everything else is very, very different. Thanks for asking me about that, though. Yeah, that was a fun show. I'm bummed it doesn't, it doesn't come back around. I mean, I'll be voicing Green Lantern and Swamp Thing in Justice League. Um, mm. I have two projects with um, Neil Blomkamp. The, um, District 9 director that you guys will see and one of the to a platform that I once again I can't really give anything away until they release it that'll be out um, I'll be Planet of the Apes you'll see that and uh, you're gonna see a bunch of things I've, I've been I've been busy the last while and so I'll be around but I'm looking forward to season three yeah and what, what was that and social media the Roger Cross that's my Nice. And I know, now I have Instagram. <laughs> I know, he finally has Instagram. <laughs> Continue to make me get Twitter, though, this, because we met the Twitter people, folks when we were in London, and they were launching the motion thing. Oh, yeah. And that's when I was like, okay, fine. And I, I have oh, yeah. And I, <laughs> the boomerang so, booth. Yeah. Yeah, their con so, was fun. Yeah. There you go. All right, well, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you for coming up here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.